There is no rest for the apprentice. Moore has done so much around here, repaired and watched and built, but in this deathly silence, she is once more taunted by the one thing she will never be able to do. Their engineering can be studied and replicated, but their strength they selfishly keep. Despite all the wiring and the manufactured tubes, the engines are powered by physical force. But the kind that no mere human could ever muster. He was always the weakest of the four. He is struggling to breathe. Even more can taste the stale air in her mouth. It seems the ventilation system isn't working properly, but nothing does without the engine. Without power, the observatory is not much use.
Something grave must have occurred. But what? Without the veil, the air is too toxic to breathe. And just as more feared, the vents have all shut. The poison is kept out, but so is the oxygen. Safan is slowly suffocating, and the other three may have it worse. shows all three purifiers are down, as if more needed any confirmation beyond the spores in the air. This is on you, Safan, Mo grunts. Pray it is not too late for me to fix your mess.
The smell made it clear. It died a long time ago. And now, the spores are taking hold of whatever remains. A better fate than the fungus eating you alive. Do not worry. I will fix your mess. And I will save our homes. More reassures herself. the damage the spores are capable of. The fungus first poisoning the mind, then ever so slowly consuming the body. How it will spoil the verdant soil and obscure the midday sun. Despite all of its dangers, more frequently inhales the poison. An occupational hazard, she calls it. A sacrifice others weren't willing to make. A few violent coughs, a few eerie apparitions, won't keep her from doing her job. After all, she is the bearer of the Omni Switch. The island of Beva, once a bustling place before the great exodus. Now just a pile of broken things and abandoned ideas. The island hosts the purifiers guarding Safon's domain and not much else anymore. used to all come here together. Miri, Moore, their friends, for the Seabury Jam, the Scarecrows, and the Rides. And then the Exodus happened. The 
smell of sea berries fills her nostrils? Or is it a scent lingering in her memories? Her uncle's estate. He should be inside, with the windows shut and doors locked. Moore's heart skips a beat. Either the fungus got to him, or he is somewhere out there, fiddling with the purifiers himself. masks. The people who once wore them. The lingering memories of people. In one way or another. Now gone. Moore's uncle owned this place. He still somehow does. One ride was two coins. Back when money still meant something. resting, waiting for a spark. Take a deep breath. The air still tastes foul, but the acrid poison is mostly gone. Two more to go.
He didn't want kids sneaking around, breaking things, or adults stealing things. But Moore was always welcome here. Moore was family. Moore never understood the appeal of bones to decorate a tourist attraction. It's authentic, her uncle would say, but he'd always dodge the question of whether the bones were from a whale or another large creature. on her tongue and fingers as she snuck a taste of the steaming sweet sour jam. For weeks after, she'd carry a little teaspoon so she wouldn't have to wash her hands. locks, protecting his property, as if a crowd might wander once again. Moore remembers the first time she saw the farmer, singing a song as he lit a candle by this tree. She didn't understand what he meant until later. The things are only gone when they are forgotten. Hey. Moore takes in the sour scents of the fermented berries, deeply curious to know their taste. excitedly showing everyone who would humor her the sounds and rhythms of the machine underneath the land. Her uncle always stayed the longest, watching her face light up the little dark holes inside. groans, dreaming of past revolutions, resolute to be a solution once more, before turning to dust. <laughs> 